lithium is a very interesting industry that we should be diving into for the rest of this discussion. Awesome. So that perfectly segues us to the deep dive on the lithium chemicals industry. So we've got some really cool brine spodamine. I don't think I've ever even heard that word. Spodamine. Spodamine. Yeah. So there are two sources of lithium in the world. Brine ponds, which are, you basically pump out salty groundwater and you extract the salts from that groundwater. And this photo over here is a photo of SQM, one of the largest lithium companies in the world, their brine ponds in Chile. So just for scale and perspective, these brine ponds cover an area that's larger than the island of Manhattan. Wow, they're those crazy colors too. Yeah. And, and you actually have had a very unique uh, opportunity where you're not just like talking about this, like you visited in person a lot of these different types of lithium mining raw materials, like kind of sites, right? I feel like yeah, that I mean, must I've, give I've, you a seen really... these, I've seen these things with my own eyes and it's, it's wow. a marvel of engineering that these can even exist. Yeah. And so, so, you know, why does this matter? What's, how does this tie into what's happening? I guess this is where all the magic really starts is we have to get the lithium out of the earth. So, I mean, sticking to, sticking to Brian for a second. Why do we need to have brine ponds covering more area than Manhattan to, to draw our lithium? The environmental impact of this is massive, right? There is no physics-based explanation for why we need brine ponds this large. It's just that that is the technology that has been used in the industry for about 50 years. And that's just been the, you know, the, ex the established accepted way in which lithium in, in which the brine based lithium industry performs and so that's just what it is but this kind of paradigm is not going to be able to help us like we can't cover like the entire country of chile with brine ponds just to be able to get enough lithium for for electric vehicles but if we keep doing this that's what it seems like is going to happen and there's a bunch of interesting companies working on this as well on direct lithium extraction another company that i follow it's a company called energy x where they're working on direct lithium extraction to eliminate the need for brine ponds so that you know you can produce 10x the amount of lithium that are being produced out of these brine ponds with like a thousand x less space wow and so can you fill us in on what is the brine pond like why do i need a big pond of brine to get out the lithium like what's actually happening there so what they do is and and they is just companies operating in brine in general they pump out salty groundwater into these ponds they let the sun evaporate the water out <laughs> over two years. And then they like scrape up the salts and separate them into potassium, into magnesium, and into lithium salts. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, look, I'll be frank, like this is a marvel of engineering, truly. Like the fact that, that there are companies in the world that can do this, the scope and scale is, is just absolutely mind boggling. But at the same time, you're you're very reliant on there being no rainfall. You're you're very reliant on like the force of physics doing its work over two years instead of finding a way to completely shortchange that and do it over two days or two weeks, for example. Yeah. And to be clear, I wanna take a step back because you said this was very intensive from a fossil fuel and like sort of pollution bad for the planet perspective. But Tesla and their impact report this year has made it very clear that like even with the status quo of how their supply chain works, there's vastly less fossil fuel emissions in the life cycle of the Tesla Model 3 versus the internal combustion engine. Like it's already a way better solution. And you're like, look how polluted this is. We can do this better. The pace of innovation to get these emissions even lower, make that gap even bigger is what we're talking about. But That's I just want correct. to make sure it's very clear that like electric vehicles, despite all of this, are even much better for the environment over the life cycle than the internal combustion engine. That is correct. EVs on a life cycle basis beat internal combustion engine any day. And let's just take Volkswagen data on this, which is what we're seeing on this chart. Okay. And th the reason I'm doing this is because the Tesla impact report is just recently published and everybody can go out and read it. And here's another chart from Volkswagen to back up the same claim from Tesla. Awesome. That on, a, on a life cycle basis, your EV is going to win. But at the same time, the part of this that's concerning is the dark blue portion, which is the vehicle production portion. It takes almost 2x the carbon footprint to make an electric vehicle as it goes out the factory gate, as does an internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, the reason for that is mostly driven by the battery components themselves. 
there hasn't been an imperative for the battery based materials industry to grow carbon free. These are not large industries 15 years ago, right? Like they've been growing along with the growth of the platform technology that is battery as they've been used in all these applications. But now there is an imperative to find a lower carbon footprint. And that's why we have new companies like Energy X that I mentioned earlier that are trying to target this problem. But on a life cycle basis, it's, it's just not even close. And